All right, in a weather alert now, spring flooding is kicking off across the Mountain West. Now, here's a look at flooding in Elk Mountain, Wyoming. State leaders saying heavy snow mixed with rising temperatures flooded parts of town and the roads there. And we're really just getting started with what we've seen because, mm -hmm. I mean, how much of our snowpack has actually melted at this point? So we still have well over 20 inches yeah. still stored up in the mountains. So we still have a long way to go. But for today, we saw a lot of water falling from the sky, we did. especially in Salt Lake. Yes, where we did. We saw a strong thunderstorm move through and we even saw some hail. So we actually got a few photos in. This was shared by John Strait in the eastern portion of Salt Lake City near the east benches. And that hailstone around half an inch. So if you're outside in that, that wouldn't feel very good. And that's why we saw the National Weather Service issue a severe thunderstorm warning. At this point, most of what we're seeing when it comes to wet weather has migrated up into the mountains. But in the mountains, we're actually seeing some pretty decent snow. This is the view from Deer Valley right now. And you can definitely tell that snow is currently coming down. And the cooler temperatures have moved in across the board. You definitely feel the effects of that cold front in northern Utah over southern Utah. But St. George, you were in the low to mid 80s this time yesterday, now sitting in the middle 70s. But Park City at 26, we're at 48 degrees in Salt Lake, 46 degrees in Ogden and 37 degrees in Logan. And we've seen kind of that messy spring snow up in Logan where that temperature is just above freezing. So the roadways are looking OK. But on some of those elevated and grassy surfaces, we have been seeing at least a little bit of light accumulation. That cold front now working its way into the southeastern portion of the state as we have the trough that's driving it. We have a few light showers in the Salt Lake Valley, but most of what we're seeing currently is definitely up in the high country where we're seeing some pretty decent snow rates up in the mountains. And for those of you in Logan, looks like that wet weather is now working its way away to the east. But as you're making your way over towards Bear Lake. We're seeing times of rain and snow. Just a few spotty showers in the eastern portion of the state and a few showers most likely down towards the I-70 corridor. But if you're in southern Utah, it really has been a nice day, but it has been a breezy day at that. With the cooler temperatures, the risk of the enhanced runoff has gone down slightly. But when you throw on more moisture that has fallen, we could see Emigration Creek climb once again going into this evening. Now, right now, they're expecting it to reach action stage once again, so not necessarily flood stage. But if we still see that rain and snow up in the mountains, that water is going to be moving downstream. So the flood advisory that we have for Emigration Creek continues through 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. And we also have a flood warning that is now in effect. That is for the Dolores River. We talked about it last week, but they've reissued it due to snow melt that could lead to flooding that goes down towards the Colorado River. So in spots, you definitely want to make sure that you're aware that flooding is going to be a possibility and in that area in the southeastern portion of Grand County some roadways may become impassable. The winter weather advisory that we have for the Wasatch Mountains this continues through seven o'clock this evening and we could see an additional one to three inches of snow in those wind gusts. They're going to be whipping around as we continue through today and some of those wind gusts have been quite strong. We've seen a wind gust near 70 miles per hour in Park City, Deer Valley 66 miles per hour, but for the central Wasatch Peaks a gust near 80 miles per hour. The high wind warning that we have for the northwestern portion of the state continues through 8 o'clock this evening, and the wind advisory that we have for the Wasatch Front continues through that time as well. Meanwhile, for the eastern portion of the state, those wind advisories will be continuing through 9 o'clock this evening. As we begin the future cast, as we go from this afternoon into this evening, the chance for wet weather in northern Utah will go down. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if we see a few showers stretching as far south as the I-70 corridor in eastern Utah as we go into tonight, but high pressure will try to keep things quiet for the latter half of tonight into the first half of our Wednesday. But then this high pressure will start to move out of the way and in northern Utah by tomorrow afternoon into tomorrow night. That chance for wet weather could pick up once again as we'll see another wave of energy work its way in. So for the most part, tomorrow looks mostly on the dry side with that chance increasing a little bit later on. And daytime highs in northern Utah will be similar compared to what we saw today. Meanwhile, in the southern portion of the state, those daytime highs will come down just that little bit more. In St. George, we should see those temperatures return to the 70s by Thursday. Then it's mid to upper 70s Friday into Saturday. Then she'll be back in the 80s by the end of the weekend into early next week. Then along the Wasatch Front, that slight chance for a few showers by the second half of tomorrow into early on Thursday. And with the temperatures dropping into the low and mid 30s for those overnight lows, actually could see a chance of rain, snow, nothing significant. Then mostly dry skies Friday, Saturday into Sunday. Daytime highs will go on that warming trend before we bring back a chance early next week as the temperatures might trend back downwards. With all this active weather, if you want to stay on top of your on top of your weather, just make sure you download the Pinpoint Weather app. Go to the Apple App Store, Google Play. It's free. All you have to do is scan the QR code right there on your screen. Stay with us. We'll be right back after the break.